All right, so I'll just walk through the way that I created this um, to kind of help out. And this could be uh, you know, a combination of all kinds of different objects kind of coming together. Uh, obviously, you can make your own pieces and parts. I did this with primitive objects just to keep it simple. But the way that I started this was just simply, um, I just brought in a base mesh to use as a map or a guideline, right? Uh, and with this in place, I sort of built my character around it. That way I kind of get a sense as to where, you know, shoulders and arms and torsos and kind of fit within the space. I mean, of course you can have different proportions for your character, but uh, I just wanted to start with something um, that, I could, that I could reference. Um, the next thing is that uh, you can use something called symmetry to build. So symmetry uh, is basically kind of like when we use symmetry in the sculpting tool, it's gonna add something on the left and the right side. So if I were to bring in, um, you know, a capsule and make this almost like a leg, right, something like this. Okay, then if I put this into the symmetry, I would have one on the other side as well. Okay, so that kind of gives you a sense as to how, to, how you can start to build an object like this. I am going to add transparency to this so I can see through it better, okay? So that sort of helps. Another thing you wanna note is check out the primitive object and it's, uh, it's uh, polygon count. So you can see that there are these very long uh, rectangular uh, polygons. What you wanna try to do is create a regular, like the best type of modeling is, is uh, forms that have really regular square uh, polygons to work with. It's just gonna offer more flexibility and bending when you're really pushing these joints around and moving them around. So uh, if you do shading with lines, you can see you know, all of that. I'm gonna click on the capsule and I'm just gonna increase the height segments, okay? Until they start to look more square. So something like this is far better when, we are mod when we're, we're gonna bring this into Mixamo and have movement and uh, rig it with the skeleton, okay? So, <clears throat> so here you can start to you know, add more objects, you know, torso obviously does not need symmetry. So I would just do something like this. Okay, uh, maybe another one. Maybe we'll do spaghetti arms, do some tubes here. thing you want to try to do is make sure you're working. Sometimes it's helpful to work in multiple formats too. Like you want, might want to work in this, this view so you can really see what you're working on. Um, but again, just try to get the basic structure in the right orientation. I'll shrink this down a little bit more. Something like that. And I'm going to make this a little bit longer. And then again, I'll do a symmetry for that, for the arms. Okay, so now I've got two arms. And then finally, I think I'll actually make these, these ones a little bit longer. Be fine. And then I'm just gonna add, I don't know, I guess I'll just add a torus for a head. All right, so here is my character. I'm gonna turn this back to shading and get rid of this male base. Okay, so let's say this was our character we wanted to use. Uh, very strange, but um, for quick demo purposes, I think this is fine. All right, we'll do that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Sort of like the, uh, I don't know. It's just this generic icon sort of figure. Now, if this was something I wanted to go for, what I would, what I would consider doing for this is, um, first of all, 
uh, I'm going to have to merge down all of these things into one object, right? So for each of these symmetry, I'm just going to, uh, you know, make it editable so that this becomes a single object. So now this capsule right here, this is going to be the legs, all right? And this one right here, the tubes, make that editable. Oh, I guess it didn't. And now this is the arms. Okay, and then we'll call this torso and the head. Oh, well, we can read that as head. Okay, so now that we have all these things, um, we also, we can merge this down to make it to a single object. At this point, you may want to consider adding uh, materials to these so that they translate later when you want to use them. So the, for example, in my, uh, you know, dancing figure here, I have different colors for different components. And uh, when we convert this to FBX, bring it into Mixamo and bring it back out, it will preserve those base materials that then we can add into, right? If we don't do that, then we have to kind of body paint this and try to apply materials accordingly, which could be more difficult, right? So if you know in advance that you wanna have a green head and a red torso and yellow, whatever, even if you don't want those exact colors, I think it's good to put in some base colors to do that. So I'm just gonna create a few materials. Um, let's make an orange torso. Oh, that's transparency. Okay, so let's say for example, the arms, let's say I wanted two different color arms, right? Well, right now, when I merge down the symmetry, it created one object for both of those arms, right? So if you wanna split them up, the way to do that would be to go to mesh and uh, conversion and polygon groups to objects. So this is a really helpful um, function, especially when you download models from the internet. Sometimes you'll get models from the internet that are just one solid object. Like for example, let's say you download a car and it's all one solid object, but you wanna put a different material on the tires than you do on the body paint, right? You can just simply go into polygon groups of objects. Sometimes it will make a zillion polygon groups, which is frustrating, but in most cases it will give you those groups that are related to one object and it will piece them out into separate pieces, okay? So when you do this, when you hit polygon groups to objects, it will create a hierarchy. It'll create both of those different arms. In this case, we have these two. And this hierarchy can just disappear, okay? And this one would be the left arm. And this one would be the right arm, okay? So if I, if I wanted to, you know, I could create a color for one arm. and a color for another arm. Okay, so that's just, you know, kind of basic, how you can sort of work with those uh, different forms together. I'm just gonna do a, one last color, sort of separate this out a little bit. I'll we'll do that for the legs and for the head. Okay, so now I've got my figure with the colors that I wanted. And then what I would do next is merge these down. So select them all, okay? Go up to mesh, conversion, connect objects and delete. Now, before you do this, you might want to uh, make a copy of these. So you can, you can go back and rearrange it if you wanted to. I'm not too concerned with that now because um, you know it's just a study project, but uh, connect objects and delete. It's gonna merge everything down into one group. And these little triangles, these are polygon selections. So each one of these materials like this material is looking for this polygon selection because it's all of the polygons that relate to that color, okay? So you have to make sure you keep all that stuff when you work with this, uh, with this model. All right, so we're pretty good. I'm just gonna save this. It's always uh, good to save before you export. So we're just gonna call this study model, and then we're gonna export it 
as an FBX. I've had more luck with the FBX export than the OBJ uh, when it comes down to preserving the, the color. And then you can see the color in Mixamo as well. For some reason, it's just been working better for me with cinema. I had a few hiccups last class, but I figured those out. So we'll export as an XBX. Now default is gonna be version 7.1. I found that Mixamo doesn't like that so much. So I've been reverting to version 6.1 when I export, okay? All this other stuff you can keep the same. Um, and I'm just gonna hit, okay? Study model, save. And now I can go into Mixamo. Did it remember me? Yeah. No, nope, wrong password. The thing about Mixamo is when you log in again, it's going to remember the character you had previously uploaded. So let's see what I was working on last. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, so here's my um, my creature that I was making, this sort of Earth-like creature. And again, anytime you click on one of these, we just get the sort of thing. Actually, that's pretty good. And I'm going to download that before I go into the next moment. So when you're working with your individual characters, right? Think download, the FBXs are not terribly large. I mean, I guess some of them are larger than others. Uh, they download pretty quickly. So I, I like to go through and, and just download a bunch of things that I may use, right, while you have it loaded. Okay, so I'm gonna upload this new character. Select character. And let's find that. Study. Study model FBX. Okay. So we should be able to see this good in color. So notice now the colors come through. And again, the thing about this that's great is you can replace those colors, right? So I could easily swap out the pink arm for a wood texture or any other material that I make. So again, it's good to build these in ahead of time because it creates those polygon sequences. The thing that we want to keep in mind is um, you really need to have this single kind of mesh, right, when you're working, because you can animate things with multiple pieces and parts and stuff like that. It's better to have the single mesh, especially when we want to sequence multiple uh, motion captures into one thing. I experimented yesterday with trying to do that with, without merging things down, and it just, it just wouldn't work in Mixamo. So, all right, so once you get this, you have to orient it to the front and back. I really don't have a front and a back here, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna hit next. And then we gotta start to align. So throw in a chin somewhere there, wherever the wrists may be, I don't know. The elbows, not very distinct. Same with the knees and then the groin. And the groin definitely up in the torso a little bit higher or else it has a kind of a weird movement. Here you can kind of see the placement in this figure, which is a good example. You know, the chin is not the bottom of the chin, but kind of the middle of the chin. Uh, so keep that in mind as you're laying these out. I'm gonna hit next, it'll auto rig it. Uh, and then I mentioned this in the video, but you definitely, the first pose you do and you download should be a T pose, okay? Because what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a T pose with our arms stretched out and all the joints in there. And remember that we can manually move each joint if we want to. Right, so if you have a pose like this, right, it's not gonna be very good for you if you wanted to do like a, you know, hands up in the air or something like that. You have to recompose all those features. So the, the generic T pose is, is pretty good. Notice what happens with the hands because it's, it, it's assuming there are hands, but I don't have any hands. So it's really stretching the mesh out in weird kind of ways. So, you know, the more, the more complex you have, uh, you know, the more sort of, actually think about it this way. Look at the, um, the models they're using for the motion captures. That's, that's what the, that type of model is really built for the, for the motion capture with the fingers and the hands and everything like that. So um, you could actually even download a T-pose of one of these figures and kind of build that around there as well. So that would be a possibility too. Anyway, this is pretty good for me. So I'm just gonna hit next. Yes, I'll use this character. And then that is a wonderful beginning pose that I think I'll use. So again, 
I, I covered this in the video, but I just want to go over it. Uh, you know, you can you can manipulate this a little bit. So direction. I'm not sure what that does actually. Doesn't seem to change it all that much. Overdrive has to do with how fast the actions happen. So let's click one. And this would be more slow, which I kind of like that better. And then the arm space comes in helpful. When you watch the animation, look to see if any of the arms cross over one another. It doesn't look like they do, but if they do, you can, you can spread out the arms more. So that's spreading them out more. And then this would be sort of shrinking them into together a little bit. See, so notice in this one, they're crossing over things, right? So if I go really narrow, you can see they're inside the body, which we don't want that to happen. So you want to figure out the arm spacing. That's a good one. Sort of try to preview around. If you can't see all the angles, click on the rotate tool, click the navigation and, and spin it. And you can kind of see, you know, where you might need some of those extra things. Notice how the legs have really good, I added all those polygons and they have really good motion to them. We don't see any crinkles or crunches or things like that. Notice the tubes get really distorted and even the torso does because I forgot to add all those extra polygons in. So keep that in mind when you're modeling. You don't want to go overboard because if you have too many polygons, it's going to really take a lot of horsepower to render and to do these actions. So you want to have like a, a you know, kind of a good balance of those. All right, I'm happy. I'm going to download this. And then we'll, we'll bring it in. So we'll do, let's see, let's try to sequence this. So I'm gonna, I'll, let's try to do two different poses. So this one is just kind of standing there. Maybe we need like a backup or uh, let's see, walking backwards. Let's see what this one looks like. It's not too bad. Maybe that one's better. All right, let's do the arm space a little bit more. Less overdrive. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. So I'm gonna download this one. And you know, I forgot to do the very first one that I should have, which is the T-pose. So let's do the T-pose as well. That's this one. Download that. 